does being on camera kind of freak you out? I mean, that lens is just staring at you and it's so intimidating and oh my goodness, I've forgotten what I wanted to say. If you can relate, then be assured that you are not alone. In fact, this is one of the biggest challenges when it comes to producing videos for your online courses is actually being in front of the camera yourself to teach them. So in this video, I'm going to give you 11 tips to help you feel more confident on camera. However, I do have more powerful tips than these. So if you want the seven on-camera secrets that every online course creator should know, go ahead and check the link in the description below and that will take you to that video as well. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned teacher or you're used to giving speeches or you just enjoy hanging out with people and interacting, you're an extrovert, because when it comes to speaking on the camera, it's a unique experience and very often we just feel like we're a bit of an idiot. <laughs> Most powerful on-camera secret, ugh, seven online camera secrets, blah, blah, blah. Seven powerful on-camera secrets that every online course creator should know. Let me know in the comment section below, what is your biggest challenge for being on camera? Thankfully, there are ways to get around these, so here are the 11 tips that you can implement right away. Number one, I think sometimes we can put too much pressure on ourselves to get it right the first time. So I encourage you not to think of it as live TV where you've got to get it, you know, one and done, but that you get the opportunity to take multiple takes. And in fact, I would encourage you to take at least two to three takes anyway, because that gives you some choice when it comes to editing. So you might like the more detailed version, or maybe the shorter version is better, or the funnier version. So it gives you a little bit of variety to choose from when it comes to editing. Number two, when it comes to recording, you want to allow yourself enough time because if you feel pressured by an appointment that you've got to be at in an hour, then you're going to feel more tense and stressed because you've got to get this done, you've got to get it right. And inevitably, it doesn't go right when you feel under pressure and it doesn't come over as well either. So allow yourself enough time to record, whether that's an entire morning or an entire afternoon, or even if you wanted to take an entire day, just make sure you do have some breaks if you take an entire day, but just allow yourself that time to be able to get the recording done without feeling pressured by time constraints. Number three, you want to be familiar with what you want to say when it comes to recording. So you might want to use an outline or even a full script in order to kind of familiar familiarize yourself <laughs> with what you want to say. The only thing I would say with this is that you don't want to quote anything verbatim. So if you are going to use a full script, which is something I do actually, let me show you. So this is my script, um, but I'm not quoting it verbatim. I'm using it as a guideline and something as a reference point for me when I'm talking to you. This makes it sound more natural and a lot less rigid than trying to remember everything that you want to say and trying to communicate it perfectly. Number four is actually one of the key things and that is to practice because practice makes progress. So take every opportunity to practice as often as you can, even daily if possible. You can do this by just talking to the camera with no other purpose um, other than getting familiar with just talking to the camera. Or you can use Facebook Lives, um, Instagram Stories, uh, YouTube, uh, all kinds of social media outlets where video is you know, available and use those as opportunities to practice. And also the benefit to this is that you are building your audience at the same time. Number five, if you find that you have a lot of nervous energy before you record, then you might want to do something to help you feel more relaxed. So maybe do some stretches, maybe listen to some calming music, maybe have a little drink or something, you know, whatever it's gonna take to help you feel more relaxed and more comfortable on camera. Number six, did you know that your brain is primarily made up of water? That means if you are dehydrated, then you are not going to function at your best. So when it comes to recording, you are not going to remember what you want to say, you're going to lack energy. It's just not going to go all that well. So make sure you are well hydrated before you start and then stay hydrated throughout the recording process so that you can get a good recording. 
Are you liking these tips so far? Well, if you are, then don't forget to check out my seven powerful on-camera secrets that every online course creator should know, and the link for that is in the description below. Number seven, if you feel like it's hard to talk to an inanimate object, then try putting a picture of someone you like and trust on top of the lens, and then you can feel like you're talking to them. Another option you could do is to use the selfie mode on your Phone, or you can have a flip out screen on your camera and you can get the feedback from yourself so it feels like there's someone there that you're talking to. My only caution with that is you don't want to be looking away from the lens. So if I look above the lens as if I were looking at a picture or if I look at the selfie screen so that I can basically be talking to myself, then I'm not actually talking to you. And you don't want to break that connection with your students. So make sure that you are talking to the lens when you are communicating, but then just have these extra things in your peripheral so that you can still feel like you're getting that feedback. Number eight, now if you find that when it comes to recording time, you just don't have the energy, you're kind of tired, you'd rather have a nap, then you can do a few things to help get that energy up and going again, which are things like listening to fun, upbeat music, um, doing some exercise, you know, jumping around, running on the spot, get that blood flow moving, that oxygen moving through your body. Uh, drink a glass of water. Again, if you're dehydrated, you're gonna lack energy, so drink some water. And uh, the thing is, as well, is to make sure that you've got good posture. So if you are slumped over and you're kind of Talking to the camera like this, the energy kind of just kind of seeps out of you and you don't come across as energetic. Um, so make sure that you have good posture when you're talking and that will give you a little bit of energy as well. Number nine, don't be so harsh on yourself. If you're like the majority of people, you probably have some negative self-talk going on, such as you're not good enough. You're hardly entertaining. You know you're not that good looking, right? You are so uncool. You may feel like you have to be perfect and you just know that it's not gonna happen. I may encourage you that your students aren't gonna judge you as harshly as you are judging yourself. They are okay with imperfections. It's part of our humanness and they're gonna connect with you and resonate with your humanness. It's not about perfection, it's about connection and good content, of course. Number 10, you may be surprised at how many people look serious and unapproachable when it comes to being on camera. Now this is often because they are a bit nervous and they're focusing on the content rather than actually on the delivery, but this can really be a put off for your students because if you are coming across as unfriendly and unapproachable, then it's going to cause a lack of connection with them. So make sure that you are smiling when you are talking on camera and make sure that you're coming across friendly and approachable as that will help build connection with your students. Number 11, unless you have a great memory and can talk off the top of your head without going down rabbit trails or rambling a lot, then I would encourage you to break down your lesson into small sections and record them small sections at a time so that you don't have to remember the entire thing in one go and you can focus on one point per section and communicate that before moving on to the next section. Okay, so those are my 11 tips and I would be very interested in knowing which tip you found the most helpful. So let me know in the comments section below and don't forget to check out the link as well that will take you to the seven powerful on-camera secrets that every online course creators should know. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos that will help you with producing your online courses using video. Stay creative, and we will talk soon.